Welcome to Jimmy Zen Reads, Hans Christian Andersen's The Leaping Match. The flea, the grasshopper and the frog once wanted to try which one of them could jump highest, so they invited the whole world and anybody else who liked to come and see the grand sight. Three famous jumpers they were, as was seen by everyone when they met together in the room. I will give my daughter to him who shall jump highest, said the king. It would be too bad for you to have all the trouble of jumping, and for us to offer no prize. The flea was first to introduce himself. He had such polite manners, and bowed to the company on every side, for he was of noble blood. Besides, he was accustomed to the society of man, which had been of great advantage to him. Next came the grasshopper. He was not quite so slightly and elegantly formed as the flea. However, he knew perfectly well how to conduct himself and wore a green uniform, which belonged to him by right of birth. Moreover, he declared himself to have sprung from a very ancient and honourable Egyptian family, and that in his present home he was very highly esteemed so much so indeed that he had been taken out of the field and put into a card house three stories high built on purpose for him and all of court cards the coloured sides being turned inwards as for the doors and windows in his house they were cut out of the body of the queen of hearts and i can sing so well added he that sixteen parlour bred crickets who have chirped and chirped ever since they were born, and yet could never get anybody to build them a card house, after hearing me have fretted themselves ten times thinner than ever, out of sheer envy and vexation. Both the flea and the grasshopper knew excellently well how to make the most of themselves, and each considered himself quite an equal match for a princess. The frog said not a word, but it might be that he had thought the more, and the house dog, after going snuffling about him, confessed that the frog must be of a good family, and the old counsellor, who in vain received three orders to hold his tongue, declared that the frog must be gifted with the spirit of prophecy, for that one could read on his back whether there was to be a severe or a mild winter, which, to be sure, is more than can be read on the back of the man who writes the weather almanac. Ah, I say nothing for the present, remarked the old king, but I observe everything and form my own private opinion thereupon. And now the match began. The flea jumped so high that no one could see what had become of him, and so they insisted he had not jumped at all, which was disgraceful after he had made such a fuss. The grasshopper jumped only half as high, but he jumped right into the king's face, and the king declared he was quite disgusted by his rudeness. The frog stood still, as if lost in thought. At last people fancied he did not intend to jump at all. I'm afraid he is ill, said the dog, and he went snuffling at him again, when, lo, all at once he made a little sidelong jump into the lap of the princess who was sitting on a low stool close by. Then spoke the king, There is nothing higher than my daughter, therefore he who jumps up to her jumps highest, but only a person of good understanding would ever have thought of that, and thus the frog has shown that he has understanding. He has brains in his head, that he has, and thus the frog won the princess. I jumped highest for all that, exclaimed the flea, but it's all the same to me. Let her have this stiff-legged, slimy creature. If she like him, I jumped highest, but I am too light and airy for this stupid world. The people can neither see me nor catch me. Dullness and heaviness win the day with them. And so the flea went into foreign service, where it is said he was killed. And the grasshopper sat on a green bank, meditating on the world and its goings-on, and at length he repeated the flea's last words. Yes, dullness and heaviness 
will win the day. Dullness and heaviness win the day. And then he again began singing his own peculiar melancholy song. And it is from him that we have learnt this history. Yet, my friend, though you read it in here, a printed book, it may not be perfectly true. The End <laughs>